Hey y'all, it's Ashley Bookish Rum. I'm back with another video. I'm like, if I look really like puffy and my nose is red and my eyes are, I promise you I am fine. I just don't feel 100% fine. My eyes and everything have been just not doing well lately. Like they've been watering a lot and burning and doing all types of weird stuff. And so I don't know what's going on. I, I would like to say allergies, but I feel like I'm kind of like past that point. But then maybe I'm not quite past that point. But either way, I promise you I am okay. Just not completely like physically 100%. And so we're just going to go with it. So as you can see from the title of this video, we are here to discuss a book that I may have recently finished here that I've been so excited to talk about, which a lot of people have been ready to hear my thoughts about this book. I am a person that reads a lot of nonfiction, not as much lately as I've been wanting to read, but I also delve heavily into political nonfiction, kind of my thing. Why is it my thing? Not really sure but as you all know I did a video earlier this year where I talked about five books that I had read about the Trump administration and there were some things that I learned so I kind of wanted to make this into a series where I kind of read some nonfiction about current events particularly probably not gonna lie to you more so about the political environment of this country the history of this country I haven't decided what the series would be called maybe reckoning with our nation something along that lines because it is a lot of reckoning with the history and current status of our country meaning the u.s and so i wanted to focus on a couple books that maybe along the lines i would be really really interested in reading and lucky y'all kelly ann conway <laughs> So if you didn't know, Kellyanne Conway came out with a book this year and it is called Here's the Deal. So Kellyanne Conway was a senior counsel person for Donald Trump. She was his campaign manager when he originally ran for president of the United States. We all know how that turned out. And so Kellyanne has a very interesting reputation in political circles and she has very interesting perspectives on things. And so you probably are asking like, Ashley, why? Because a lot of you asked me like, why were you reading five books about the Trump administration? And honestly, I was just really interested in learning more particulars outside of what had been projected through media. But a lot of you probably are still saying, but why would you actively choose to listen to Kellyanne Conway's book? Not just read it, but listen to it where she's reading the book and then I had to listen to her for 20 hours. Not technically 20 hours because I did listen to it on 1.5 speed, but still, that is still listening to her voice for an extended period of time. As you can already tell from this intro, I am not particularly a huge fan of Kelly Ann Conway. She's just not my cup of tea. We fundamentally disagree about a lot of things. And I don't think that she's always the most likable person. And so sometimes it's very difficult to listen to her or empathize with a lot of things that she has said in the past. But I wanted to read it because it was going to give me a different perspective on the Trump administration. And it is from a side of the political spectrum that I am not on. She's definitely more conservative than I am and I thought by doing this project I would give myself the opportunity to see some things from the other perspectives that are out there in terms of our current political situation. Now someone did ask me on a previous video how do I read political nonfiction that has opposing views as I do and not get frustrated or I think they said that they get frustrated so how do I handle that so I'm gonna go ahead and answer this. I did get frustrated and it is easy to get frustrated and it's not an easy thing to do because I think inherently when you're reading something that you are not really in alignment with you find yourself constantly disagreeing with it and getting frustrated with some of the thoughts and perspectives which is why it did take me a little while to read this book and typical terms you know I usually can finish an audiobook in about two days this I think took me up to five because I was only able to listen to it in chunks and really process it in chunks because it was just a lot it was a whole lot so we're going to talk a little bit about what I learned from reading this book 
and I'm not gonna lie to you I talked about this in a live show there were some aspects of this book where I learned a little bit about her experience and there was one particular point that I actually did agree with her on and so I know that's probably so strange be like what but I think that her perspective and how she was feeling about it I relate it to her being a parent and so regardless of whatever situation is happening in the household I think that her perspective as a parent is something that I could relate to because I am a parent so but we will dive into that later so what is here's the deal about it is a tell-all from Kelly Ann's perspective about what it was like to work in the Trump administration but there also was a huge chunk of the book that really talked about her experience growing up and a predominantly woman-led household family members there weren't very uh, there weren't a lot of men around in terms of influences she grew up in a strong catholic household which leads to a lot of her more conservative beliefs i believe that was kind of the analogy that i got from it which was you know in itself it was kind of interesting i'm always interested in people's like backstories how they grew up and what has really influenced them to become who they are um kellyanne has been working in politics for an extended period of time I know that from the way that some things were kind of like positioned in media it kind of looked like Kellyanne just came out of left field and she just had like no political experience at least like from what I saw that's how it felt at sometimes but she actually did have a lot of political experience she did go to law school and everything so working in the political arena is something that she had done for a while she'd done a lot of speaking and engagement and she was doing a lot of this stuff like for free and then eventually she was able to start doing like paid speaker events and stuff like that so she had had her pulse or her finger on the pulse of politics way before she became a senior counsel to uh, President Trump. So that is one thing that I think sometimes people do miss is how involved she was in the political environment prior to the Trump administration and I didn't even realize how involved she was and how she built her career around it. And in fact, I did not realize that she was 50 years old already by the time that she had started working in the Trump administration. She had a lot of experience going in, which doesn't deter from the fact, <laughs> well, it doesn't change, sorry, it doesn't change the fact that I still fundamentally don't agree with a lot of things that she has to say. So in this tell all, basically, we are given a different perspective on individuals that quite often a lot of people who are famous of the Trump administration don't really criticize. I was very surprised to learn how much Kellyanne Conway disliked Jared Kushner, which is weird because that is Ivanka's husband, Trump's son-in-law. And so to have such a close relationship with Trump and his family, but not like Jared Kushner, it just, the dynamic was very intriguing, like hearing about how she felt as though Jared saw her as competition. He did not want her to take credit as being the reason why Trump was able to secure presidency because she was his campaign manager. He wanted to take, you know, he wanted to take lead of that. And that when she got into the White House, he didn't want her to have any significant roles. He kind of wanted to strip her of being able to do pretty much anything. And that were, that were actually quite a few instances in which she talks about the struggle she had being a woman in the White House during that administration. And so I think that that was one of the things that I found very fascinating is that even in 2022, which is something that we know, but I think something that's often glossed over, it's still the struggle, regardless of whatever political affiliation they may have, there, there is a, still a power struggle between men and women who are serving in any type of political atmosphere. And you would think that maybe she wouldn't have had such an issue, at least for me. And that was very naive of me to even think that she wouldn't have those issues uh, and I think it's because of the way that they framed the administration but she really dives deep into how much she struggled being a woman in the administration and having to deal with a lot of men who were given titles and power that did not want her to have the same authority. Where this book kind of took a little bit of a, not a little bit, it's where it took a, a huge left for me 
is that a lot of this felt like this is my opportunity to kind of hit below the belt because I've been hit below the belt. It felt very like tit for tat in a lot of ways where I think that Kellyanne felt very attacked and victimized by a lot of things that the media did to her and things that people in the administration were saying about her. If you did not know, there was this huge conversation about Kellyanne's husband, George Conway, who is not a Trump fan at all. So she ends up having to deal with a lot of media attention about George tweeting about Trump and saying that you know the Trump administration is not that great and meanwhile his wife is a part of the Trump administration she also has that same issue with her old, I think it's her oldest daughter and so what is interesting about this whole thing is that she often talks about one how she felt some type of way towards George because it was making her choose between her husband and her boss and that George was breaking his wedding vows by not honoring and respecting her and it put her in a very tight position with the president but for me it just was kind of awkward because it was like oh you know I don't know if I would ever be in a position where it's like I'm choosing my husband or my boss <laughs> like, <laughs> and she felt like that was a position that he, and she's entitled to her her feelings but I think listening to that it was just very jarring to be like George put me in a position where I had to choose between like my husband and my boss and I'm like yikes like that's that's very cringy and very awkward but in addition to that because people were talking about like her marriage this was her opportunity to then talk about other people's marriages and not by name but like talking about how people were having affairs and people's marriages were in shambles and she never talked about them and yet they felt like they had so much right to comment on her marriage and so in some aspects while she was expressing her feelings they did come across quite juvenile at times because it was like you know you hit me so now I'm gonna hit you back and I think that she had a lot of frustration and anger going into possibly writing this and so this was kind of therapeutic for her to write all this stuff out and so for me reading it it was not therapeutic because it was like how dare you talk about me in this way but then like a couple of pages later she would be talking about people too like the name calling the badgering and putting people down and getting on people about doing that and then 15 pages later she'd be doing the same thing like I it just felt like miniature Trumpisms and so for me I really really struggled with that because I was like I feel like I'm reading a book that is by someone who is very much so like a prodigy of Trump and I know she probably would not like to be described as, as that but it just had a certain level of immaturity to it that I was just like you know if this was an opportunity to really explain like your perspective and how things really were in the Trump administration I don't think that you're doing a great job at selling someone who's not in the same political party as you or has opposing views as you. You're not really convincing me that, you know, it's it's anything better than what anyone else does. I think that you can't say like, oh, these people talk about me, talk about, talk about me, did me to bad. And then you do the same thing. And it's like, well, you're going tit for tat and two wrongs at the end of the day don't make a right. I'm not in her shoes. I'm not in any politician's shoes. And being in the spotlight is not an easy thing, regardless of where you fall in terms of like your political beliefs or not, whether you're a not so great person or not, like that there's a lot that comes with all that media attention especially being a part of that administration but it was just not it wasn't done in a way that was convincing and I think that sometimes the most difficult part of writing books like this is that I think you may be writing for what you think is your audience but you also should keep in mind too that there could be people who have opposing views at you that want to give you the opportunity to kind of voice your opinions and your feelings and by going tit for tat and being nitpicky and naggy and really like just you know you hit me below the belt so I'm going to do the same to you like that's just not a convincing tool to use and so another thing that really like I, I really really struggled with with this book is that she's very critical of like 
a lot of men in this book. I think there's probably like one or two men in the whole context of this book during this administration that she didn't necessarily have a bad relationship with. And I believe at the beginning of the book she talks about she was in a perfect environment to grow up like really really hating men. And so it was very awkward to be like she didn't grow up in that environment but then in this book like you pretty much hate or dislike or have very critical opinions of all the men except Trump and so for me that was like mind-boggling it was very much so yes you work for this man yes you you know you have strong beliefs in him as a politician but for me it was like he's not perfect <laughs> by no means is this man perfect so to see her be so critical of so many different men in the in administration and not be critical of trump's felt for me very politically motivated like you won't talk bad about this man because you're still hanging on for his voters you're still wanting the people who are closely affiliated with him to be behind you in case you ever decide to take any type of political office which is funny that that was even a thing because that's how it comes across at least in my opinion that's how it comes across is that she refused to criticize him not because he'd never done anything wrong but because you didn't want to offend the people that follow him and you still piss the man off so if y'all did not know there is a portion of the book in which kellyanne talks about the fact that she was the first person in the administration to let Trump know that he had lost the election that it was the, there was no hope in them getting the election back and so when that came out Trump came out with a comment and said if she had ever said anything like that to me I would have been done with her so still it was very interesting because it was like still in all this protection that you attempted to do surrounding this man he still threw you under the bus when it was all said and done and if you ever said anything like that to her and told her like hey you know this man still threw you under the bus she would disagree because she had an interview with trevor noah which i will link that down in the description box below which i watched and he asked her about that portion of the book where he says you know well there's a portion of the book in which you say that you were the first person to say to him that he had lost you know the election and he made a comment saying that he would be done with you like so is he lying or are you lying and she danced she tap danced around all because in truth one of them has to be lying because you're saying you were the first person in the administration to tell him that he had lost the election and he's saying that you were not and then if you had ever said anything like that he would have been done with you so which one is it and she really couldn't answer the question which is a gift of hers if you did not know she's very good at tap dancing around questions and not answer it and giving you this long explanation without ever answering the question that you're asking it is a very interesting gift that she has gift of gab honestly if you want to call it that but for me I, I really just couldn't process how you could be so critical of all these men who were part of his administration and how they were I mean even his son-in-law you tore his son up son-in-law apart from here to kingdom come like literally there were no words spared for Kushner none there was not she ripped him a new one and I was like oh okay like I was like you really felt some type of way but throughout all of this like Steve Bannon tore him like ripped him a new one literally you were going through and ripping everybody a new a-hole and yet still Trump just got 100% marks he did no wrong he couldn't have done wrong his administration was perfect and so like there were a couple times in which she like she talked about the Charlottesville incident in which you know there were white supremacists out there with tiki torches and someone ends up dying because they were hit by a car and Trump had made the comment there were fine people on both sides and she had made commentary on that and said it was a, bis a big misunderstanding because he was talking about the fact that there were fine people on both sides people who wanted to tear down the monument and people who didn't want to tear down the monument i just feel like it's hard to defend a statement like that because why would that be something that you would say after someone has died and that for me is just the lack of media training that happens on his end like if that's what you wanted which I highly disagree with that 
but the issue that I have is that why would you say that after someone has died there were fine people on both sides knowing that there were two different viewpoints that were clashing in Charlottesville that makes no sense to me that you would say that after the event instead of just clarifying in the moment and saying I think that there are people who are good who who wanted the statue to be maintained and people who are good who did not want the statue to be maintained saying it as they're good people on both sides after someone who's been hit by a car in the name of racism is is not is not and the people who were protesting it with tiki torches were nazis neo-nazi skinheads white supremacists and racists so there's no explaining that away in my perspective there's nothing that you could do to justify that and i think it's very easy for a white woman to wash that away and not really take into consideration how other people are impacted by it she also made some comments about abortions that I was not 100% comfortable with and I think that I have a very different perspective on abortions and it fundamentally for me comes down to I don't like the terms of pro-life that she was using because I think that some people who use the term pro-life and we can agree to disagree on this if anybody watching would like to my issue with with the pro-life that term is that a lot of individuals who use that term are pro-life only as it exists to abortion rights and not pro-life when it comes to war they weren't pro-life when it came to COVID and so they were actually pro-choice when it came to COVID and so I I, I fund them like this there wasn't enough nuance in that conversation and she brought up some interesting statistical information but once again this is a you know a white woman making commentary about accessibility of resources for impoverished black and brown communities it just is very awkward um and it's not your lived experience and so you know to discuss what is accessible and what is easy for people is you know in terms of assistance in having a child that maybe you don't want to have and going through that process and being provided access to certain things like I say this as a single black woman having a child and what resources were provided to me because I can tell you it's really not a lot I don't care what anybody says there's not all these resources then I always like to ask like where are these resources really being advertised what communities are they advertised to because I don't know if they're really advertised to black and brown poor communities because we wouldn't have the struggles that we have if all these resources existed but that's a conversation for a different day but I just felt like her her conversation because she discussed it so in depth that there was a certain lack of nuance to it that I was just like uh, you know you have your thoughts and some things I was like okay I don't agree with you but you have your perspective but then there were other points where I was like nah like girl no like you're there's elements here that you're leaving out of the conversation and out of the argument that would kind of push what you're saying to the side so there was that and she also made some pretty interesting comments about what happened on january 6th of 2021 and it was uh it was very intriguing um about how she was saying that the president needed to make a comment about what was going on and that he needed to tell these individuals to stop but i don't feel like she went into a significant detail about what about any of that stuff except her response to it and and i was like eh, but you know once again it's kind of this avoidance thing we're not going to get into the nitty-gritty of actually like what happened what motivated people and it was like yeah i told these people like it's not right like i don't get along with nancy pelosi but i was telling them like it was wrong of them to be in her office and it's like but we're not talking about 
the core issue as to why these things happen. It was, this is what I did to help prevent the problem or what I did to help stop the problem, but I'm not going to discuss the underlying issues that cause the problem because then we would have to address how people who are racist, neo-Nazis, whatever, they feel empowered by what Donald Trump was saying. I don't care how many times because she said it. Oh, he doesn't endorse that. He said that he doesn't endorse and doesn't stand with racists and white supremacists and stuff like that. And okay, you can say whatever you want to say, but clearly there's been things that have been said or done where these people feel emboldened and they feel like this is their opportunity to voice how they feel about certain things. So I, I take that with a grain of salt. The final thing that I kind of want to address, because there's, a, there's really, honestly, I mean, I could sit down and talk about this book forever because there's so much to really unpack with whatever she was attempting to do with this book, which honestly, y'all, I love this book like, okay, was this just like, you know, you want to get out your side of the story and you want to bash some people along the way and it was very cathartic for you to do this? Do you feel like you got it all out your system now? Like it was almost like she was really pissed off and it was like, let me take you boxing and so you can beat the shit out of something and now that you're done boxing, like, do you feel like you've got it out? Do you feel like you've released that little bit? Like that's what this book felt like. It was like she needed this for her own personal mental health and so what I read was a little bit more of like chaos it was it was very it was very emotionally charged just put it that way and not saying that because she is a woman because I know some people would take that and run with it but honestly if you read the book it does feel very emotionally charged she's, she's very pissed off in a lot of this book and she's very defensive which some people would say that she has the authority and the right to be defensive about some things. Now, this last section is something that I kind of, which very shocked me, that I felt where she was as a parent. So, going back to the conflict in the family, talked about George. There was also a conflict between Kelly Ann and her daughter, which I had heard about, but I hadn't really done much much research into. So if you didn't know, Kelly Ann has four kids. I believe the first two are twins, and then she has a third and a fourth. And so this would be her eldest daughter. If I'm wrong about that, correct me, but I'm pretty sure it is her eldest daughter uh, that we that we get all this commentary from. So she had done some stuff on social media where she had gained a huge TikTok following. I believe she had posted some stuff on Instagram as well. The Black Lives Matter protests took place in 2020. Um, her daughter wanted to be a part of them. And I, what I do respect is that Kellyanne let her do that. Um, I would have never thought that she would allow her daughter to be a part of the protest considering there was a comment made about the black lives matter movement that i didn't like <laughs> at all I, I just didn't like at all and so i was very surprised when she said like you know her daughter and a couple of her daughter's friends wanted to go to join in in the black lives matter movement which oh also i was surprised to hear her you know call George Floyd's murder a murder. I was very surprised too to hear her say that people should be required to watch that video from beginning to end which surprised in, in that she would say that and also surprised and once again the lack of nuance in saying something like that because I don't think everybody should be required to watch that. I don't think black people should be required to watch that. That's very traumatizing um, from one black body to another to see something like that happen. But I think that there are some groups that need to understand that that is just one of many examples of the institutionalized racism, the systemic racism that exists in this country. And so I was very shocked to hear that. But once again, going back to Kelly Ann's kind of lack of nuance and having conversations about things, it was very much so like, you know, I was one of the first you know staffers to call it or one of the first people in the administration to call it a murder and you know I feel like it, honestly I was shocked but then I also part of me feels like it's kind of like virtual sing virtue sing signaling a little bit because it doesn't really delve into once again the underlying issues we get very surface level things without digging into why something like this would even happen in the 21st century 
in America that is supposed to be post racism so once again we just completely skip an entire conversation but either way I was very shocked to hear that she did drop her daughter off in a group of friends at a Black Lives Matter protest blew my mind I was shocked I was like oh didn't know that she would do something along those lines but she did it and she talked about how she had instilled in her kids to have their own personal perspective their own personal thoughts or whatever the case may be because she did not want to feel like she didn't want them to feel like they didn't have a voice and I was like well that's very interesting not what I expected but <laughs> things get a little dicey when her daughter definitely starts like I mean really digging into her mom about her role in the Trump administration and she ends up going viral on TikTok for some things that she says about the Trump administration and her mother included like her mother was not spared from the shots being fired like <laughs> the girl did not care she did not care the thing that Kellyanne talked about that I understood as a parent may not agree with her may not really care for her but it I I can't lie and say I don't know she was as a parent there were media sources that were contacting her 15 year old child that's a minor and as an adult and if someone did that to my child I too would feel like that's inappropriate I don't care how much of a story you want to build and how much you dislike and hate Kellyanne Conway at the end of the day that is a child that essentially it's 15 16 frontal cortex not completely developed yet do I agree with some of the things she was saying yes is her decision making going to be on par like biologically absolutely not she's 15 like you're not you cannot literally you're not going to make the best decisions because your decision making part of your brain is not developed yet so you do things without worrying about the consequences while doing it you think about that after it's already been done and so for media to slide in her dms interview her and do stuff without even thinking about parental consent to me is it was crossing the line like I don't think that that's fair regardless of whether what we thought she was saying was true or not that's an invasion of I think what should be a safe arena for a child and people are like oh yeah well she's on social media and she's posting stuff but it's a child and I think that these are adults who were trying to interview a child without parental consent without and even George who still at this point did not like Trump did not like the administration even George said you know like I don't agree with the administration and stuff but at the same time I also feel as though you know that's my child and you should not be asking her to do any type of sound bites getting any type of statements from her without me her parent being present like that is a decent thing to do but I think what she was trying to point out is that and that's I think that's for media across the board left right middle whatever there are some aspects of like decency that have been lost and so I was very surprised that I was like you know I kind of I understand where you're coming from with that like because if someone did that to my daughter like as a mother I would feel some type of way like regardless of whatever my job is or whether you agree or disagree with me like that's that's her that's her baby and you know it's not my job to comment on her parenting and whatever decisions have been made after the fact because her daughter has made a comment where people are like yeah I don't believe that things are really going well in your family I feel like your mom wrote this she made a statement on Twitter I think last year saying like she's grown and she's working on a relationship with her mom and they're healing and things are better and people are like but are they really or is this your mom writing this and it's like you know what when she gets old enough I'm sure she'll come out with her own tell-all book <laughs> but for right now being a minor living in that household like there's no telling what she does have to deal with and what she doesn't have to deal with so it's very surprised like, like okay I kind of get what you're saying on that end but you know overall just kind of thinking about the context and the framework of this book I I I don't know what I would ever rate this probably a two star because it was just it was very <laughs> It was just very, she was very angry. <laughs> this is a very angry book. 
she just pissed off at a lot of people and it was like this is my time to get back at all of you for screwing my my life up and a lot of people say like she's really not that likable person she's really she's uh, she's hard to like and so it just doesn't make it any easier having to listen to a lot of things that she was saying in this book the book lacked a lot of nuance and I just could not get over the fact of how critical she was of everyone like in the Trump administration not everyone because she was very critical of um She's very critical of the men. She wasn't as critical of uh, the women who were in the administration. Of course, you know, she talked about Hillary a lot. Uh, I Did she talk about Harris in this? I'm not sure if she talked about Harris, but she talked about Nancy Pelosi and, you know, all that stuff. But it, it was, it was very like, you criticize everybody, but like, you won't criticize him. And I'm not saying that she had to like drag him out, but... Or, or beat him to a pulp or anything like that but if you're going to go so hard and be so very critical of everyone else like there's no exception because he's a human there's no exception as to why he should not have been criticized as well like I said I think that she did provide some interesting points about working in the administration as a woman and also balancing motherhood and working full-time because it's something that I do and missing out on some things and trying to figure out like how to make stuff like that work when you're processing the fact that you can have it all and you want to follow your dreams but then you don't want to miss out on when your kids really need you which really led to her turning in her letter of, of resignation and talking about the different relationships that um that she had with the other women in the administration and how she was treated when her kids needed to call her or ask her questions and how some people in the administration treated her because of that so you know listening to that it was it was it was intriguing but then there were some things where i was like you just you're not very nuanced in these conversations even the the audio clip about trump in the locker room that whole situation the whole thing talking about the murder of george floyd wasn't really nuanced the conversations about abortion rights like that wasn't very new like i just feel like there were certain aspects of the conversation that were left out intentionally because they would have pushed back against some of the points that she was making so I I, I, <laughs> I don't recommend this book for the faint of heart especially if you're not a Kelly and Conway fan if you don't really like what she did the mystery like this probably is not a book that you want to pick up but I wanted to read it because I wanted to get a different perspective and so there probably will be a couple times throughout this project in which I am going to read some stuff of opposing views and it may be a struggle on some days because I'll be like yeah oh man this is oh like I just can't I can't do this but I think it's good to give a well um, rounded perspective of everything because I think I wouldn't have known some of her uh, struggles that she had without reading this book and she is a human I don't don't care for her and I will keep saying that I don't care for her as a person um, I don't like a lot of things she said I, I, I fundamentally disagree with her about everything basically um, but I did see some things in there where I was like you know I've struggled with this as a mom and you know if I was a parent I probably would have done the same thing in this situation I'm more so really connected with her her discussing some things about you know being a woman in politics and being a mother but you know when it came down to the actual politics it was like oh no girl this is a no-go for me like we not gonna see nothing eye to eye so but yeah I'm glad that you all have tuned in like if you've made it this far my god bless you <laughs> because <laughs> you, <yeah. laughs> that's a feat in itself um but yes thank you for watching if you have any suggestions let's go ahead and open this up if you have any suggestions of anything that you would like to see me read that deals specifically with politics in this country or the history of this country and you would like to see within this series let me know in the comment box below as always if you like this video give me a thumbs up and if you want to see more content click the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a video and i'll be back with a video soon